Okay, hello everyone. Um, so I think it, we should get started. It doesn't look like anybody else is going to going to turn up today. So I um I'll begin. Um, so just to introduce myself to start with, um, my name's Helen Sparrow, and I'm an outreach officer for the Ensemble Project, which is what we're going to be learning about over the course of the next seven weeks. Um, this is the first of um of the webinar series, um, and we're going to be learning about um, an introduction to the Ensemble Genome Browser. Um, so over the course of the next seven weeks, um, we're going to learn what Ensemble is, um, some of the different data types that you can get in Ensemble, um, how to navigate the Ensemble browser website. Um, we're going to have um, some demonstrations on how to use some of the tools. And really importantly, um, hopefully by the end of this, you'll know where to go for help and documentation. So as I mentioned, this is the first um, webinar of this series. Um, so today it's me with an introduction. Um, next week on the 13th of April, it's going to be Emily, and she's going to be talking to you about Ensemble Genes. The following week, um, we've got Victoria, and she's going to be talking to you how you can export data from Ensemble with Biomart. Um, and again, the next week, we'll have Victoria, um, and she'll be talking about variation data in Ensemble and um, tell you a little bit about the uh, Ensemble VEP so you can annot annotate your own variants. The next week we've got Ben on the 4th of May and he's going to talk to you about Ensemble Compara and that's how you can com compare um, how the pipelines that we use to compare genes and genomes. Um, and then we've got Ben again the week after on the 11th of May and he's going to be talking to you about the Ensemble Regulatory Build. And finally, the last of this webinar series, we've got Emily again. And she's going to be talking about advanced access um, to Ensemble data and also how to upload your own data. So the structure of each of these um, webinars, um, so the firstly we're going to start, each of us is going to start with a presentation. And in that presentation we'll tell you what the data is or what the tool is um, and what we do in the Ensemble team to produce or process that data to, um, to get it ready for you guys to, to view. After that, um, we will enter into the browser and we will give you a demonstration of how to find the data or how to use the tool. And then finally, um, we will provide you with some exercises that you can do in your own time. These are provided on the Train Online course. We provide the solutions as well in case you get stuck. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping for the webinar today. There is a chat box on the right hand side. Um, in the room with me today, I've got um, Ben, Emily, and Victoria, so they'll be ready to answer any of your questions. Have you got any um, while I'm talking? Um, there's no threading in the chat boxes, so if you are in a conversation with one of the team members, if you at their username, um, then they'll know, uh, everyone else will know not to respond and interrupt your thread. Okay, so, so this is um, just a link to the, um, the Train Online course. Um, and this is the page of today's. Um, so when I've finished with this webinar, I will process it and I will upload this webinar and it will appear on this page hosted by YouTube and Youku. Um, the slides are already there available. Um, the questions are already there available. And so um, we've got the introduction to ensemble um, sections on the left, and that's this page. And then the, the page after that is to the exercises and then the page after that is to the solutions. So when you're doing the exercises, um, if you've got any um, problems or you're struggling with them at all, um, the solutions, as I mentioned, are on the page after the exercises. Um, we've also got a Facebook group, um, which all of you are very welcome to join, and you can discuss um, with other people in the group and with us if you've got any questions. Um, if you don't want to use Facebook for this, um, please do email the help desk, and we'll be willing to answer any questions that you've got with the exercises or just with Ensemble in general. All right, so I'm going to get started with this introduction now. Um, so this is exploring the Ensemble Genome Browser. So first of all, when, when we do these, um, these courses in person, this is a question that we, we ask everybody who's attending, is why do we need genome browsers? So I'll just give you a few seconds to think about that, why, why you think we need genome browsers.
well, hopefully you've thought of something, um, but this is this is the reason we've got, um, is that so since the 70s we've been sequencing genomes. So the first genome was sequenced in 1977 and that was a bacteriophage and that was just five kilobases long. And since then um, we've been sequencing lots and lots more genomes, including the human genome, which was finished um, in 2004, and that was three gigabases. Um, and since then we completed the, the Thousand Genomes project, so that again was human genomes, and that was 2,504 genomes. So on top of having large, um, large genomes, we're also resequencing genomes, and what that is creating is an awful lot of data. And the data looks like this. It's quite meaningless um, to our eyes, it's quite meaningless in general without, um, without anything added to it. But we know that buried inside this sequence there's a lot of information. So we know we've got transcripts and proteins hidden in there, um, we've got expression, um, we've got expression elements in there, regulatory elements that control the expression of the transcripts and proteins. In addition, when we have been sequencing more than one individual, we can start to determine where the variants between those individuals are as well. So all of that data we know is hidden inside that sequence, um, but um, from just sequencing um, we don't have access to that. So what genome browsers do is that they pull information um, from experiments from all over the world and from all, all different um, scientists all into one place, um, and then we provide a way to visualize that. So Ensemble is one of the three main genome browsers in the world. Um, I work for Ensemble, so that's what we'll be talking about today, but um, in addition to that, there's the UCSC Genome Browser and the NCBI Map Viewer. Um, in general, we basically all have the same kinds of information, and it is just personal preference which one you want to use, um, but as I mentioned, I work for Ensemble, so that's what I'll be talking about today. All right, so what does Ensemble do? Um, so first of all, we start with the genome sequence. Um, so we don't create any, we don't do any sequencing and we don't do any assembling. Um, we import the assemblies from um, public archives and they have to come to us complete. And then once we've imported those, um, we, we get to work. And we get to work first of all by um, building gene models. And we've got gene models for about 70 species. Um, because we've got that many species, we're able to build gene trees. Um, we also bring data in from the ENCODE project, um, Blueprint Epigenomics um, and Roadmap Epigenomics, um, and with data from those projects we can build um, regulatory features. We import variants um, from lots of places um, and we can um, display those onto the genome as well. And then we have um, a tool called the Variant Effect Predictor, so you can annotate your own variants onto the genome. If you've got any of your own data, um, we've got a way in Ensemble so you can visualize that against the genome and against all of our other annotation. We've got a tool called Biomart, so you can export data directly from our databases but without needing to do any programming. If you want to do some programming, we've got programmatic access via the APIs, we've got a Perl API and we've got a REST API. And on top of that, um, Ensemble is completely open source, so all of the data we've got um, and all of the methods we use are completely freely available. Oops. Okay, so I've just highlighted a few things in red there, and these are things that are specific to Ensemble. Um, so as I mentioned, we run the gene builds ourselves, so that's the Ensemble gene build. Um, internally, we, we um, run our own um, gene tree pipelines, so all of the gene trees we have are specific to Ensemble. Um, we have a team doing the regulatory build as well, so that's all done in-house. Um, the variation, the variant effect predictor is built um, by somebody in Ensemble as well. Biomart is only available on Ensemble. We're the only genome browser that provides programmatic access via APIs, and we're the only genome browser that's completely open source. So depending on the, the type of data that you're interested in and the types of manipulation that you want to do, there's different ways that um, you can access that data in Ensemble. So if you're just looking at data one by one, the main browser is a great way to do that. It's very simple. You can just use a search and um, the information will come up. You can also use Biomart, the REST API, and the Variant Effect Predictor for data one by one, as well as the Perl API and accessing our MySQL databases directly. Biomart, um, REST API, VEP, Perl API, and MySQL are also good for groups of data. If you want to access um, 
data at the whole genome level. We have an FTP site where you can download files of data, um, and all, all those files are just based on the entire genome, so all of the phenotypes of a genome, all of the genes in a genome, all of the sequence, anything like that. And the Perl API and MySQL are great for um, accessing data on genome scale as well. Um, and as a lot of you, a um, lot of people signed up for this webinar course are from around the world, um, but Ensemble is used worldwide. We're based in Europe, the other genome browsers are based in the States, but um, we're definitely used um, around the world, um, as I'm sure a lot of you know if you've come, if you're from around the world yourself. <laughs> Okay, so the main ensemble project is focused on vertebrates, and we have over 70 vertebrate species. And we've tried to get vertebrates that are um, model organisms or important um, scientifically in some, way, in some way, but also trying to get breadth across taxonomic space as well. Um, the astute of you will have noticed that we've got three non-vertebrates over there on the left. So we've got C. elegans, Drosophila, and Saccharomyces um, cerevisiae as well. These are in there for historical reasons, but also um, they're very useful um, groups for um, sort of anchoring our gene trees as well. Um, so as well as Ensemble, we've got the Ensemble Genomes Project. Um, so that is focusing on non-vertebrates, and the Ensemble Genomes site um, has sort of five mini sites inside it. I say mini, they've got many thousands of genomes, um, and that includes Ensemble Bacteria, protists, fungi, metazoa, and plants. In general, the browser sites all work in the same way, and we'll, when I jump into my demo, we can see some examples of that. So just a little bit of information about those two sites. So Ensemble was released in the year 2000. As I mentioned, that's focusing on vertebrates. Um, the main differences between Ensemble and Ensemble genomes is that um, the gene annotation. So as I mentioned in Ensemble, we do the gene annotation ourselves. And before Ensemble genomes, um, we just don't have the scope to do that. So we do that in collaboration with the scientific communities and we import the gene annotation along with the genome. So obviously we're working with data and we're trying to import um, data to make everything up to date and keep relevant. So what we do is that we work on this release cycle. So over the course of two to three months, we'll bring in a few new different data types. We'll update data as we have it. And then as we update data, we'll need to rerun some of our pipelines. So new data can include new genome assemblies or new variation data. And as we update gene sets, we need to run our comparative genomic sets again. So every two to three months as we import new data, um, we, um, we, we rerun a lot of our pipelines as well. Um, the reason that we do this um, every two to three months rather than just rolling all the time is just so that our team can keep up with all of the stuff, but also um, having these release numbers, so as you noticed, um, perhaps in the top right, um, we've just released Ensemble version 88 in March 2017. Um, having these release cycles just means that you can trace the data. So if you've been working on Ensemble data since it's Ensemble data from January, you might have noticed that some of it has changed as we've imported new data and rerun our pipelines again. So um, you can trace back um, the release version that you were using, so you can go back and use um, the same data again. And the way that we allow that is that we have, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, we have um, archive sites. So we keep, um, we keep websites with a copy of the data as it was frozen in time before we release a new release. And you can access that data for two to three years on the browser and indefinitely we keep it on a server if you want to, to access from the FTP site or um, use the APIs. Um, just a little bit of background about what a genome assembly is. As I mentioned already, we don't do any of the assembly or, or sequencing ourselves. Um, but sequencing, um, we don't have the technology yet to do sequencing of entire chromosomes in one go. So what we need to do is that we need to fragment the genome and sequence those fragments. Um, to then rebuild the genome after we've sequenced those, we match up overlaps and then we get a genome assembly. The example that I've got on this slide suggests that um, the overlaps all have lots of coverage and we get a perfectly nice linear genome assembly at the end of it. 
Unfortunately, um, these methods do lead to some errors and sometimes we don't get complete coverage, so there might be some gaps, um, some areas might be inverted. So all of the genomes that we import are still a work in progress and none of them are likely to be perfect. So everything that we build on top of that will be a prediction based on the quality of the genome assembly. Um, so when, when we do rebuild genomes, um, we do so um, into contigs. So these blue bars that I have on the right hand side, these are different sections of the human genome. Um, and each di different section of the human genome has come from a specific individual. Um, depending on the genome that you're looking at, whether it's human um, or another species, um, it may be from one single individual or in the case of human from a small number of individuals. But any one region of of any genome will be from an individual. All right, um, so that's the end of my introductory slide. So I'm going to jump into the browser now. Um, we've had we've had some issues with stability of the browser just this morning, so hopefully everything goes okay. If we do have any issues with the browser um, this morning, I will um, re-record the video this afternoon, and then um, I'll upload that as soon as possible so that you can view the demo later on this afternoon and then we'll email all of you to let you know when that's out. But hopefully everything's fine now. It seemed to be stable before I started. Okay, so I'm going to um, go to the Ensemble, Gino, uh, the Ensemble homepage to start with. Um, I'm going to use a web browser to do that. I'm going to use Chrome. Um, we officially support Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox and Internet Explorer from Microsoft. Um, we do recommend that you use Chrome or Firefox, but um, we do um, we do support Internet Explorer. It's just a bit less stable. Okay, so I've jumped out of my presentation now, and I've already got a tab open for the, with the um, with the Ensemble homepage. So you can see that's at www.ensemble.org. Um, if you've navigated to Ensemble.org and you're somewhere else in the world, it might be that you've been taken to one of our mirror sites. So Ensemble, um, our main site um, is based out of servers that are in London, um, but we also have copies of the site, <laughs> not in London, <laughs> here. No. Okay, we're, we're based on servers that are in Cambridge, <laughs> um, but um, we also have copies of the site that are based around the world. So depending on where you are in the world, um, we might you might find it's much faster to access data on your local mirror site. Um, and you, you probably will be automatically forwarded to your mirror site if you are in one of those locations. So don't worry if your URL is a bit different. Okay, so um, just to show you a little bit around this home page. Um, so we've got this blue header bar across the top. That header bar is um, present on all pages in Ensemble. So clicking on the logo to Ensemble will bring you back to this home page and you can do that from anywhere in Ensemble. Um, then we've got links to some of our main tools and then links to other tools there. Importantly, help and documentation. There is a button for help and documentation on all pages in Ensemble. You can always access that from this header bar. And there's a search bar over on the right as well. So going down into the main section of the page, on the right-hand side, we've got a What's New box. Um, and it says here that What's New in Ensemble Release 88. So this is the best way to find out what release we're currently on. Um, so it says here on release 88. Um, and if you were previously working on data from a different release and you wanted to find, um, find data from that previous release or perhaps compare it to what's come out in release 88, um, you can do so by looking at the archive sites. Um, so what we've got in this new news box here is details about what's come out in this latest release and then full details are a link at the bottom. But if you scroll down the page um, and go to the bottom right hand side, there is a link here to view in archive site. If we click on that, you can see this is a list of all of the archive sites that we've got live at the moment. So if you were working on data perhaps from um, November last year, you might be interested in looking at Ensemble 86 um, to see what differences there was between the data you were looking at and what data we have now. Or if you just want to complete your project on the data that you used at the time, you can view that there. <clears throat> it is really important that you note down which release you're using if you've started using some data because if you do happen to publish any any um, 
anything um, that you've used on Sumble Data for, um, you will need to write down what release it was, just so that if anybody ever wants to come along and reproduce what you've done in your paper, they'll need to access to the correct data that you used um, in Ensemble at the time. Okay, so um, in the center of this page, we've got some, some links to sort of popular data and popular tools. And then over on the left-hand left side is how you'll choose a species if you want to browse a genome. So first of all, um, we've got favorite genomes here. Um, these are just sort of common favorites, human, mouse, and zebrafish. Um, if you log in, you can edit these favorites to be your favorites. Um, and so at the very top right hand side, we've got this login register button. Um, please do create um, a login for Ensemble. We won't spam you with emails or anything. It just makes you, lets you customize a few different options around the site and also save any data. And if you're using any of the tools, it lets you save some of the jobs. Um, so that's, that's a nice way to, to customize Ensemble. Um, we also have a drop down with all of the species that we have, as well as a full list of ensemble species. So I'm going to click on that full list. And this brings us to a table with all of the species that we have in ensemble. You can see we've got the common name, the scientific name, and then the taxon ID, the ensemble assembly ID, as well as the accession number. Um, the type of gene build that we've done, as well as the other different data types that we've got. So if we've got variation or regulation data here. We have a filter button at the top, so if you want to do a quick search for your species, for example, human, you can just type that in and then um, it will have filtered the table to the data that you want, or the species that you want. So here I'm just going to click on human. And this has loaded the human homepage. So you can see over on the right hand side, we've got human here. We've got a search box that will be limited to just searching human. And then we've got a few other boxes around. So up on the right hand side, it's what's new specifically to human in release 88. We've got a few different links, for example, data types. If you want to jump to an example transcript view or an example gene tree, we've got links around here. But primarily, I want to draw your attention to this more information and statistics button. So if you're, if you're new to genome browsers, um, and you, this is a really important place to come, I think, because <laughs> it lets you know about the data that you're going to be working with. So um, here we'll have a section about the assembly. So who did the sequencing? Who did the assembly? Is the assembly um, sort of complete? Is it done into chromosomes? Is there lots of, are there lots of scaffolds that haven't been put into chromosomes? So just the quality of the assembly that you're going to be working on and where it came from. So you can see here for human, um, the human assembly is looked after by the Genome Reference Consortium, and they do updates from time to time as well. And those updates you can see are in these, this section called patches. And scrolling further down, we've got details about the gene annotation and how that was performed, as well as a detailed PDF um, with, with more information about the gene build. So over on the right hand side, we've got a, a sort of a few summary tables of, of details about the genome, for example, how long it is, um, how many genes we've got, um, things like that. Um, if you look here at the assembly, it says it's GRC H38. So this is the most com uh, this is the most recent assembly, this is the most up-to-date assembly that we have for human. Um, if you scroll over to the right hand side, you'll see um, we've got other assemblies, the left hand side, we've got other assemblies listed here. So there's GRC H37 as well as NCBI 36. So these are the previous assemblies um, of, of human um, which um, have been updated over time and we're now on 38. Um, we realize a lot of people are still working with GRC H37, so we keep a full archive site um, with data. Um, related to GRCH37 that we update from time to time there. So one of the ways to access that is to click go here. But also if we go back to the Ensemble homepage by clicking the logo at the top, you can also access the GR human GRCH37 um, site here by clicking on this link. And here we have the GRCH37 archive site. Um, and we update data on GRCH37 from time to time, not as often as we do for the most up-to-date release, but 
and we do try to keep it relatively up to date. But otherwise, um, this browser works the same way as GRCH38. But if you are specifically working on this assembly, please do come to this site and make sure you, you're using tools from this site as well. Okay, I'm just going to close that and go back to the home page. All right, so um, this is where you'll find all of the vertebrate genomes that we have. But many of you might be working on non-vertebrates. Um, so in that case, um, we've got another website, the Ensemble Genomes website. So I've got the, a tab open with that already. But this is the home page for the Ensemble Genomes project. Um, they're currently on release 34. And you can see what's new in release 34. Um, and then on the far right hand side, we've got links to each of those mini sites that I mentioned, as well as one that returns you back to the main ensemble page. So I'm going to click on protists to start with. And here you can see it's very similar to the ensemble um, homepage. Everything looks the same apart from the header bar is, is purple. Um, again, you can um, see information about um, the different genomes that we've got. You've got links to favorite genomes. Again, if you wanted to log in or register, you could change your own favorites if you want to. Um, so differences here with protists along with bacteria is that if you wanted to find a genome, because we are starting to have so many genomes um, in these sites, um, instead of having a drop down list um, to search from, you can actually just type to search. So for here, you could type Start, start to uh, searching for plasmodium and then you come up with all of the different species that we've got um, to start with plasmodium. Okay, so a quick way to get out of protists and into any of the other sites is to click this little down arrow and we can go to ensemble bacteria from there. And you'll see again, it looks very similar to the ensemble site and again, because we have over 40,000 bacteria and we don't have a drop down list of genomes, so again, you can start searching for your favorite genome. So I'm going to search for Peptoclostridium difficile. And here you go, we get a list um, of all of those different genomes that we've got. You see a lot of them are um, of the same species. We have different strains or just different people have done assemblies and sequencing of those strains. We're scrolling down, um, you can see my favorite one here is Peptoclostridium difficile. If we click on that one, um, like we did for human, we will get taken to the species page for this bacterium. And again, we can click on more information and statistics to find out more about that um, before, more about that um, that genome before we start looking at data about it. Um, so we have a bit less data because we don't know um, we don't have a lot of details about the gene build because we didn't do that ourselves. We just imported it from the ENA. Okay, so um, that's sort of a brief introduction to the home page and a few of the species pages. I'm going to go back into my um, into my presentation, and we're going to go on to the second section of this hands-on now. So now we're going to look at a region of the human genome. Um, I'm going to take we're going to look at this region here. So what we have here is some coordinates. Um, so we're going to be looking at chromosome four, um, starting at um, this base and then finishing at this base. So these are numbered, so the first base of a chromosome would be one all the way to the end. So I'm going to copy these coordinates. I'm going to go to the Ensemble Genome Browser and I'm going to use the search box. So our search boxes in Ensemble are really powerful. Um, you can search for almost any, well, you can search for anything that we have in Ensemble. So you can use gene IDs, gene names, variant IDs. Um, we've got phenotypes, or even if you just see a word that you don't recognize or understand, if you search for that, then you'll probably find something in, in our documentation or our glossary. So if I paste in the coordinates there, um, actually that will cause an error, because um, we need to be specific about the species um, when we paste in coordinates. Um, so there's two ways of doing that. First of all, I could be specific and search my species here, so I could choose human. Alternatively, I can just type in human there um, and then click go, and that's going to take us to the region view. Hopefully, if everything's working at the minute. 
Okay, so this is one of the most popular views in Ensemble. Um, what we've opened up is this location tab. So Ensemble works on this tab system, and over the course of the next webinars as well, you'll see more of this happening, but this is one of the primary tabs, is a location tab. Um, so what we have in this tab, first of all, is we've got three different image views. The first one of those will be zooming into the chromosome of the region that you've selected. So we've got the entire chromosome here, chromosome 4. So we've got the chromosome along the middle, um, we've got the different staining patterns, and we've got a red box here, and what this red box indicates um, is the region of the coordinates that we've selected. So this is the region that we've selected. We've also got assembly exceptions um, listed here. So these are um, patches to the genome, as well as haplotypes. Scrolling down to the next box, we've got um, we've got a sort of more zoomed in view here. Um, uh, in this case, and we're looking at a one megabase view. Again, we've got a red box of where we're zoomed into, um, and but this just gives us a nice overview of the flanking regions either side. Um, and if you remember in my slides, I was mentioning how um, the genomes are divided, or the genomes are, are, are an assembly of the contigs. So we have the contig bar here with alternating blue colors, and each of these contigs has an ID or an accession, and you can click on each one of these and find out more details about it and where we got it from and things like that. You see this one doesn't have an ID. Um, it actually does have an ID. It's just that the text was too long to fit in it. So again, if you wanted to find out um, the ID, you can just click on it. We've got a few um, features here. So um, you can either drag and select um, or select a region. So if you want to navigate around this region, this region um, I've got this, um, this tool selected, the arrow. So if I click and drag, I can move around, a bit like Google Maps. And I can be quite specific about where I land. Um, so that's obviously moved where my red box is located. So it's asking me in the box below, do I want to update? So do I want to move there? Or do I want to reset to go back to where I was? So I'll just click reset for now. The other way you can navigate around in this view is by clicking this tool option, the select a region. And there I can use my mouse. You can see I've got this red bar now. And I can just draw a box um, as big or as small as I like, um, perhaps around another gene. And again, I can highlight that, re that region if I wanted to sort of remember it for later, or I can jump to it if I want to move there. So in this track, we have a genes track. Um, and you can see that the, the name of the gene um, is actually left, uh, left bound to the gene. So you can see, um, for example, here, if I use my cursor and I go to the very left-hand side of this um, golden block, um, that's that's abutting this IL-21 that's written in gold there. All right, so now I think we're ready to move down to the main view. And we've got a red box around the outside, and that's because this view is, is limited to the coordinates that we've selected, so that we've, we're zoomed into the region that we wanted. Again, we've got this contigs bar across the center. Um, as well as um, two genes sets here. So we've got um, a gene set above and a gene set below. And if it's above, that means it's on the forward strand. And if it's below, it means it's on the reverse strand. So in some cases, if we have stranded data, then it will be reproduced above and below the contig bar, just to indicate that it's on the right strand. Okay, so we've got other tracks here, and I'm using the word track as if you should all know exactly what it is. It is some sort of genome browser jargon that we have, but basically it's data, um, it's data plotted linearly along the genome, and it's different types of data. Um, we will have um, this sort of linear data here. So each one of these things, as I scroll my mouse down, is a data track, and it will represent different data but obviously it's plotted along the genome in this fashion. So scrolling down to the very bottom, you can see we've got some legends for the different colors that we use in those different tracks. Um, and going down a little bit further, we can see that I currently have 559 tracks turned off. 
Um, so that's 559 pieces of data that we're not currently viewing. So if you're interested in finding a way to view that, how are we going to customize this view to see some of the data that we're not currently viewing? So first of all, um, anywhere that you see a cogwheel means that you can sort of update your view and, and, and customize what you're looking at to some extent. So on this page, we've got this configure this page cogwheel. There's also one down here. If you click on that, you get a pop-up. And inside this pop-up, we have, first of all, in the center here, a list of currently active tracks. Um, and we've got all of the rest of the tracks divided into these different sections on the left-hand side. I'm just going to quickly click Reset Configuration. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, but first of all, if you want to add tracks, so if you want to find any data, you could first of all browse through each of these sections, click on each one. You see next to Sequence and Assembly, it says 3 slash 32. That means there are currently three tracks turned on from that section out of a possible 32. So I'm going to turn on two tracks now. I'm going to turn on um, a proteins track from Uniprot for mammals. Um, so one way to do that would be to, to browse through the categories. Alternatively, I can use this, uh, this box at the top left to search for the track. So if I type in proteins, it will start to search through the, the title of any of the tracks, also the description of any of the tracks to, to find um, all of the tracks that are related to proteins. You can see just halfway through typing the word proteins, I've got the track I wanted here, so it was mammal proteins from Uniprot. So if I click in this empty box here, it gives me some different options um, of how to display this. And there's no right or wrong answer here, it's completely up to you as to how you want to visualize this data in the track. Um, I'm going to go with labels for now, um, but please do choose whatever you want to choose. Um, you can always change it later, um, it's nothing to worry about. So there's that track turned on. Um, I'm also going to turn on another track, um, a variant track, um, dbSNP variants. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the variation header. And you can see we've got lots of variant tracks here. Um, and the one I want in this top section, dbSNP variants. And I'm going to turn them on in the normal style. So both of those tracks are now um, ready to load. So to get out of this view, I've got two options. First of all, I can click on this tick box, or I can just click anywhere outside the box, and it will load. So while I'm waiting for that to load, I'll just show you a few other options that we have. So I mentioned we've got the cog wheel there, so that's how you can add and remove tracks. Um, if you have any of your own data and you would like to view them as tracks, we've got a button here to upload that. I won't show you that today because Emily's going to cover that in the final webinar, webinar 7. Um, if you want to share this image, so perhaps with a colleague, um, and so if you've all added any tracks or added some of your own data, um, you, the, if clicking on this will give you a URL that contains those changes that you've made. Um, we've also got exporting the image, so if you're writing a presentation or you've got a poster or a paper and you want to include an image with this information on it, you can use that to export this image. If you've added a lot of tracks and you hate them all, you can get rid of them all in one go by clicking Reset Configuration. Um, and another thing is you can do is Reset Track Order. So I mentioned that we have tracks that are above and below the contig bar. Um, we can also move some of these tracks around. So hovering your, your cursor over the colored blocks on the side, you can shuffle tracks and move them around so that you're in control of viewing which data is next to which other data. So it helps you view things more easily. So you can see that that's loaded now. Um, and again, so I've added this proteins for of this Uniprot track here. Proteins are stranded, so I'll have a track above the blue bar, the blue contig bar, and another one below as well. And scrolling a bit further down, you can see here's the dbSNP track that I turned on. So this dbSNP track, um, it looks like solid blocks. These are actually individual, these are actually individual variants, but we're zoomed out so far that we can't see those. 
So one of the really powerful things that we've got in this view is that we can zoom in um, all the way to the nucleotide level. So one way to do that is using these zoom options at the top. Alternatively, um, picking up this cursor where we can draw a, draw a box to select a region. We could draw a box perhaps around this X on here and jumping to that region, we'll zoom in just to that exon and then we'll be able to find um, on the variant track we'll be starting to look at individual variants um, in the exon here so you can pick out those individual variants. Okay and finally um, so we'll be learning about how you can download gene and transcript sequences um, in the next webinar but if you just want to download genome sequence from a region. Um, on the left hand side we've got this export data option so if we click on that one you can see we get this pop-up. Um, we can alter the coordinates from where we're downloading. You can change which strand you're downloading um, but you'll get FASTA sequence that's got this FASTA header um, and then you can download the genomic sequence that way. Okay. So um, I'm going to jump back into my presentation and start to wrap up. So hopefully um, you've learned today that Ensemble is more than just a browser. Um, so we start by importing genome assemblies. Um, over the course of the next few weeks, you'll learn a lot more about the different annotation that we do. But we do um, sort of decorate the genome by adding genes and transcripts, variants, regulatory features. Um, and with the number of genomes that we have, we can do some really powerful comparative genomics. This whole webinar series is focusing on the way that we display that data, um, except for the final one where um, Emily will be showing us a bit about the, the APIs, um, as well as focusing on the number of the tools that we provide to interrogate that data. And finally, we also have um, the APIs that Emily's going to talk about at the end. So um, just to remind you that we've got six more webinars coming up. Um, all of the webinars begin at 9 a.m. Um, BST, so we're at British summer time. So please make sure um, you set your clocks um, if you're all here today um, or you're watching on YouTube and you'd like to catch the other ones live, please do um, sign up. As I mentioned, Emily's giving the next webinar and that's on genes and she's going to talk about the ensemble pipeline and how we annotate um, genes onto the genome assemblies. She's also going to mention the Havana, Havana um, manual annotation as well and how we combine those to make the GenCode gene set. Um, in her demonstration, she's going to focus on the gene tab and all of the different information you can get um, regarding genes in the gene tab. And then she'll move into the transcript tab and see the different data that you can get that are specific to transcripts. Um, so I don't know if many of you have been asking questions, but if you have any questions here at the end, we're going to stay online for a few minutes um, and we can stay and ask it, answer any of the questions that you might have. Um, if you don't think of any questions until you're doing the exercises, again, we've got the Facebook group. Um, and we've got um, the, um, our help desk email as well. So please do have a go at the exercises. They're a really good way to practice using all of the things that you're learning. Um, or feel free to read the exercises, but try them out with your own species or try them out um, with your own regions that you're interested in. Um, they're just a guide to get you to practice, um, practice what you're learning. So yeah, as I, as I just mentioned, um, if you have any questions, the, we, we're providing the exercise solutions. We've got the Facebook group, and here's the email for the help desk as well. Um, for further help and documentation, um, so um, beyond the course that we've got here, we have a lot of other courses on the EBI training pages um, specific to certain data types or, or specific functions that you can do in Ensemble. All of these videos will be uploaded to YouTube as well as the training page and we have a lot of other YouTube and Youku videos. Um, some of them are just short demonstrations, others go into um, the background of data a lot more. So we've got a lot of videos there, please do um, use that resource. And please do contact us, so if you've got any issues using Ensemble or um, you've got any suggestions or feedback of any kind, please do contact us at the help desk. 
Um, and you can follow the Ensemble public mailing list. So we've got dev at ensemble.org. So that's um, sort of bioinformaticians with technical questions. Um, you can subscribe to that, as well as announce at ensemble.org, where we will announce new releases and new, new data that we're adding. We also have social media, so you can follow us on Facebook. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. Um, and we've got a blog as well, which is um, ensemble.info. Um, the blog is where we write, <coughs> where we write um, sort of detailed posts about what's come up in the latest releases or what's coming up in the latest releases, as well as if we've introduced a new data type that we're really excited about, we'll also write a post there with a few more details about where we've got that from and, and what we're doing with the data to present it to you. And finally, um, if, you, um, if you are writing uh, papers of your own and you're using some of our data, please do cite us. Um, I'll show on the next slide that we rely on funding um, and obviously citations um, help us get that funding. So this is everybody that works at Ensemble. Um, it's a big project with lots of people coming together, um, lots of great minds. So I'd just like to thank all of them for building the resource that we're presenting to you over this series. Um, and this is everybody involved in the project. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank all of our funders. As I mentioned, everything we have in Ensemble is completely um, open source and freely available. Um, and that's thanks to um, the generosity of our funders. <laughs>